We have all run into service meshing issues in one way or another. So let's learn a bit more about what service meshing errors you can encounter in MoldX30 and some general tips on how you can fix them. Hello everyone, I'm Alex Baker and today we're going to get into the identifying service mesh errors in MoldX30. What do these errors actually mean and how can we possibly fix them? All right, so as far as the nomenclature is concerned, there's two different types of errors that show up. Red errors uh, are going to need to be fixed in order to move on to the solid meshing, whereas black errors are more of like a recommendation or situationally uh, necessary to fix. All right, starting off, we're just gonna go all the way from the top down. Free edges are where two mesh edges do not connect with one another. So either that's where two services are disconnected from one another completely, or like uh, as we see here, if there's an element that's just missing. This will show us a red edge, and you can generally use the fill hole tool to fix these types of errors. Um, but in the case where two service meshes are completely disconnected from one another, you might want to either use the move node tool or the stitch tool to merge those surfaces back together. A T-connect edge is very simply where three edges come to the same edge. So if you have uh, maybe two surfaces, one that bisects another surface, that cuts off the volume and we can't run a simulation that way. So wherever there are three elements that are connected to the same edge, there will be a purple edge that shows up and that will be your T-connect. You can fix these by either deleting the element, so just delete one of the three adjoining elements. Um, usually there's some sort of surface that's associated uh, or sometimes there's just a delinquent surface mesh that's created there. So uh, deleting those elements is, is usually fine. And in some cases there's uh, elements that are just coming together because the services are so close, uh, maybe in a really thin region of the part geometry. In that case, you can use the move node command. Overlapping elements are just as they sound. They are two elements that are overlapped with one another. They'll show as a teal color in Moldax. And you can very simply just get rid of these by deleting all of the overlapping elements and then use the fill hole command to fill in the resulting hole in the geometry. All right, interference elements, this is actually a newer element in Moldex 3D, and it indicates where two solid geometries intersect one another. So this kind of goes one step above mesh interaction and actually covers solid interaction. So if you do see interference elements, that's a really good indication that something's wrong in the CAD geometry, not necessarily just in the mesh. Most of the time you can fix these by uh, going back to your CAD system and making sure that, two, that the two geometries are not directly intersecting one another. You can also use the traditional mesh matching method by deleting the mesh and then copy paste the mesh from the, from the smaller geometry to the larger one and then stitch the meshes together. We have a video for that up on our YouTube channel um, so you can check out how to match the meshes. All right, probably the most common type of error is aspect ratio. Whenever somebody says aspect ratio, they usually get flashbacks to their most difficult mesh that they've ever done in Moldex. Uh, aspect ratio is very simply just a long, thin element. The aspect ratio is really a description of how the shortest edge on an element compares to the longest edge. It's not directly what it means, but that's generally how you can think about it. So if there's one very short edge on an element and one very large edge on an element, that's typically where your aspect ratios are gonna happen. They'll show us red on the geometry. Sometimes they can even be difficult to see. You might have to zoom in or use the zoom option to find those elements. Uh, but most of the time you can fix them. Uh, with the CAD system, you can remove thin and unnecessary surfaces. Sometimes you'll actually get a group of aspect ratio problems along a fillet or a chamfer or a rib or something like that. Uh, and removing some of those unnecessary surfaces can really benefit you in the long run, especially if it's a repeated feature. Otherwise, you'll be most of the time using unfillet. Unfillet is the premier tool to get rid of these aspect ratio problems. Essentially what unfillet does is it just merges all of the nodes around that element together um, to get rid of it. So it just opens up all the elements adjoining or adjacent to that element and uh, removes that element. 
Alternatively, if there's a group of uh, aspect ratio problems that you want to get rid of, you can always just use the delete function and then fill in the hole. All right, sharp angle will uh, happen under two situations where either two elements come together at a knife edge or where two surfaces are uh, kind of uh, coming together at a reflex angle, as we call it. So reflex angle is uh, very close to 360 degrees, so it's not an acute angle, which is where a knife edge would happen, but it's the actually the exact opposite. And this will actually show as a black error in uh, Mold X3D. The black errors, again, are just warnings and are typically not required to be fixed. However, if you get a sharp angle, you really want to identify whether it's an acute angle or that reflex angle. Because if it's an acute angle, that can be really difficult to create the boundary layer mesh between those two elements. And uh, in that case, those sharp angles are a problem. But in the case of a reflex angle, we're actually creating boundary layer mesh on the opposite side around that reflex. And uh, that's actually very easy to do. So you really need to identify what type of sharp angle it is, whether it's an acute angle or a reflex angle. And um, you can typically fix this by using the move node tool. Using move node will just allow you to move those elements a little bit farther away from one another, opening up the gap and allowing the solid mesh to be generated properly. Or you can delete these elements and then try to fill in the hole. Uh, it is a little bit difficult for a sharp angle to delete and fill the hole. Um, you might have to uh, customize the hole that you're filling back in, or if you're okay with that sharp angle being taken out completely, um, you can just fill straight across that uh, that sharp angle. All right, an inner shell is more of just a warning. It's not always necessary to fix these. However, uh, inner shells will happen whenever you have a volume encapsulated by another volume. Um, so you can see in the picture, that there are multiple spheres. So you, that's how you can think of an inner shell. It's just a sphere within a sphere, um, but there's no connection between those two bodies. What ends up happening in the solid mesh is Mold X3D sees both of those geometries and it tries to mesh them independently. It doesn't try to mesh the space between those boundaries. It tries to mesh them both, uh, which creates intersecting elements. So uh, in reality, you can't have this kind of thing. Um, you can't just have an inner shell because that would mean that uh, an insert is floating in midair. Uh, there always has to be some sort of connection between an inner section of the geometry and the outer section. All right, a non-manifold point is actually very similar to a T-connect edge, except instead of it being three edges, usually it's... Uh, a bunch of edges merging to the same point. And just like in T-connect edges, most of the time moving the node is enough. Uh, that, that usually happens when there's two geometries that are so close to one another that Moldex just kind of puts them together. Trouble points are quite diverse in how they will show up in Moldex 3D. They'll show as green points and all nodes affected will be highlighted. Um, it it's kind of the other category for mesh errors. So if there's something very abnormal with the mesh, usually trouble points are the thing that are going to show up. Uh, if there are trouble points, you'll usually want to first identify where the trouble points are happening, again, as the green points on your mesh. And then you'll probably just want to delete all of that mesh and regenerate it um, using the delete and fill hole sort of method. All right, the penultimate error here, size gap, will happen whenever you have a large size disparity between the different surface meshes between two objects. They'll typically show as pink elements, and you can see in the picture here where we have a mold insert in red and the part in the beige color. You can see how different the sizes are between the elements on the part and the elements on the insert. This is a problem not necessarily in the solid mesher, but in the solver. When we have to interpolate the information across the boundary between the part and the part insert, we wanna make sure that information is being transponded one-to-one. -one. When we have a large mesh size disparity, we have about, let's say in the case of this insert, we have maybe 10 elements being correlated to the single element on the part. And that can create actually a large amount of error that will propagate throughout the part, uh, especially as far as thermal properties are concerned. So 
most of the time what'll happen is uh, you'll want to fix this in the node seating. You want to make sure that the two objects are seated the same. Um, and then if there is just a local mesh size disparity, then you can use the split command. Split will divide an element into two separate elements so that you can uh, reduce the overall size of those elements down to the, uh, down to the smaller mesh size. All right, and the final mesh error is non-matching faces. This is just a warning uh, for in the interaction between two objects. You most of the time don't need to match these two objects, meaning that the nodes are complete, are perfectly coincident between them. But in certain cases, like for example, a core shift analysis or a mold deflection analysis, those nodes do have to be lined up with one another. So in that case, you do need to address this non-matching faces problem. If you're just concerned about the thermal transfer across that boundary, then you really don't need to match the meshes and you can actually ignore these non-matching faces for the most part. And in that case, you might wanna to go to your preferences under meshing control solid and check the box that's highlighted here for allow non-matching faces. However, like I mentioned, for certain types of analyses, you will want to make sure to address the uh, non-matching faces. You wanna make sure to match those perfectly to ensure there's a one-to-one -one translation. And that is all of the mesh defects that are possible in Mold X3D. If you have a question about any of the specific errors that we've shown here, leave a comment down below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Mold X3D North America YouTube channel. Thank you and go beyond simulation with Mold X3D. Mm -hmm.